it would be closer to the PERS set. I honestly can't remember what the original data was. I think it was close to the medium. It was a medium. It was a proposal at the medium salary range, so it, was, it would be probably the closest would be um, on TRB 147. So what meeting would that have been? I think it may have been in November. Oh, okay. I might have it. Oh, my goodness. We all, a lot of us should have access to that. So that would have been in the board. So, I mean, I, if, if I'm assuming you were up really rough carrying, so I, I guess what I'm saying is I don't mind the terms. Because uh, I think that that, that is a, that. Okay, Rich, go ahead and, and check in because I don't have you on there again, and we need to have this on there. John keeps reminding me, and I'm not doing a very good job of bringing you in. I apologize. Go um, ahead. As we are sort of a little talking over each other, so banner chairs, it's not quite your fault. <laughs> um, it, it, I, I guess I don't have any, I mean, it's a sort of fine tuning in a way that I'm not, it's really hard for me to do, but I, it seems to me that adopting the, per, the, the PERS group gets us a substantial improvement and makes up a lot of the ground that I think we're behind. It does not put us out ahead of the other. We have lots of things that I think make us more attractive than hers. It will make us very competitive if the salaries are roughly comparable. Um, and I'm, I'm content with our ability to win that conversation with potential arrivees and leavees from, from the organization. And it, it, the other you know, as we've gotten these new groups, we get out quite a bit ahead of that. And it's, it's in this still, we're still coming off a climate that's hard to do, hard to, uh, going to be hard to justify that. Um, but I don't, I have to say, doing that, I don't see any reason particularly to deviate on the CEO issue either. So I would be okay going there and holding them all including them all in that range. I don't know if that helps you or not. Cassandra, have you found what you were looking for? I, I looked at um, what was presented, and I don't think that Adam had provided the salary ranges because we were in the beginning phases of right. the it, discussion. So, it's just, yeah. yeah. There's a public fund comparator group from 09. Right. And then the proposed public fund comparator group at a 67% weighting. We're debating composition in the abstract. Right, yeah. right. right. That's right. So April would have been the first time that there have been salary bans right. actually presented to the committee. Already, Sharon. Um, I do. I think our board is very deliberative, <laughs> and I think that I think one of the things I've been wrestling with just listening to the conversation this afternoon on this item is I f I feel like there's a pattern where. We go to staff, ask for more information, staff comes back, gives us a new scenario, we talk about it, and then we ask for more information. And I think it's great that the board, that we have that back and forth, because clearly we want to wrestle through things. I think what I feel sometimes, though, is we do that for a long period of time. We've been having this conversation since almost a year ago in November, and then obviously getting more data in, in April, and then... You know, and then I know I missed the meeting in June, but there was information there. And my sense is there's just people on this board, which is completely within the right people. You know, some people don't want to move. Some people do. And I'm not sure just kind of, I, I don't know. I, I find I'm just trying to figure out for our board, maybe this is just the way we have to get to decisions. But I, I find, I guess I'm feeling like, I want to make sure we're utilizing your time well. And then if we can't make a move, then that's fine. I mean, I think we just have to make that decision. Sometimes I just feel like we're sort of yanking around. We're just kind of um, asking for things. But then that new information doesn't seem to bring us to a point Closure. of making a decision. And I guess I just find that to be part of me just feels like that doesn't feel very efficient to me. And it doesn't feel like the most effective use of time. And so. I don't have an answer to that. I think, you know, in the conversation, I know I was on record before of wanting to move forward. I, I do think that we need to change um, 
I, I think we need to increase salaries. And so I, I personally like the CalPERS comparator group. It just makes intuitive sense to me that our comparator group would be similar in that particular realm. And so um, I agree with Dana. I don't think we should separate the CEO position out. I recognize maybe not everyone. Obviously, people are not on the same we're not on the same wavelength about this, but I, I guess what I would ask for our board I mean, is just, um, I guess when we make these requests for information, I just wanted to help us move along in the decision, whether that's a decision I agree with or a decision I don't agree with. And um, so for me, I, I guess the additional information that you gave about the CalPERS comparator group, you know, I personally don't like an, uh, the idea of endowments. I do think the salaries are really high with the staff there. So to me, I really like the CalPERS comparator group. I think that's what I would, I don't know if I'm ready. I, I guess I could make my own motion, <laughs> but I would move that we adopt the CalPERS comparator group and, and move forward with the salary ranges as, or, you know, obviously we're going to be discussing that in, in more detail, but, um, are. So I know that's an amendment to what you were suggesting, which was a substitute to what was being suggested. Yeah. So we so have a substitute to the substitute as long as there is a second to Sharon's motion. Okay. Can, can I clarify? Is that uh, Grant? Can I, if he has a question I to was that? Just, based on the conversation, I was, thought it was time to withdraw my motion, but I think that's been taken. <laughs> okay, we're good. Paul? I, I'm just a little confused. Um, all of the material we've gotten shows CalPERS policy and proposed. So are you saying to adopt their policy or their proposed numbers? Uh, can I? Can you help me? <laughs> this is proposed. 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 That's what they. That's what their they new did policy adopt is. The yes. Right. Right. Thank you. And do you yes. mind just? Thanks, Paul. Can we Professor. just include the percentile in the motion that says it will go in our policy and it would? The Calpers. It's fiftieth median percentile. Yeah, it's the fiftieth percentile, just to be exact. Yeah. All right. It's the fiftieth percentile. So now you can all weigh in on this motion. So Lamont, what I'm hearing is that the board adopt the same pay comparator group that CalPERS adopted and set the market target at the 50th percentile. Is that what you have? That's what I have, yes. Alrighty. So that's the substitute to the substitute, which was substitute for the original. Uh, Is there any further discussion? Rich? Yeah, Wait, no, go, yeah you got to go. I've got to do better on you. I just want okay. everybody to be clear. If you if you are, it's not going to be the numbers that you see one by one on here. It's going to be the numbers in the second appendix that's at the fiftieth percentile on chart one, and that's what that's what PERS did. Is that right? They adopted the fiftieth percentile because the difference between the fiftieth percentile and the twenty-fifth percentile is substantial. It's. Um on the second attachment is not PERS proposed. It's in the first attachment where we have it um, categorized position by position on each page, where it says at the bottom, and I'll down here, um, that's where CalPERS information is. So when you say CalPERS, so let's let's take let's take Chief Investment Officer, okay? So when you've got CalPERS proposed, if the range is 408 to 612. Correct. And that is the that is the midpoint of their comparator group. Correct. And, but we were when we were looking at our salaries, was it at the fifty percent tile? So that if you've got our proposed group in that same one, three forty five to five oh five for a chief investment officer. That's in the low quartile. That's in the low quartile. So the numbers we're looking at here are the high quartile compared to our being at the 25th percentile. Because we had the foundations and ours with some higher cost. That's why it was argued that That's way. why we went to 25. That's right. right. With the idea that maybe you would move it up over time or something like that. But that but standard process would be 50. Normally, uh, would a business target competitive pay at the lowest quartile? I mean, it was an odd thing to 
present, but that's because you. That's prepared. how we were compensating for the fact we had a, 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 a high-paying group in there. Right. If you pass the motion you've proposed, then you're more like you would normally do that at the 50th percentile. Okay. So the numbers we need to look at then are on are on page 147. All the all, all the pages per job class, CIO, investment director. Each one has a proposal, but it shows you what the five. Yeah. Good. You did do it. Sorry. Those would. I'm sorry. So those those numbers there, as Calper has proposed, is the 50th percentile. Correct. Okay. I'm good with numbers. Paul, I'm just trying to clarify what we're doing here because it seems like we've made a motion to um, not not adjust up, but adjust up even more now. Right. I mean, I'm just looking at. Again, the CIO numbers. I'm just trying to understand what we're doing here. Our current policy says the low, the minimum is 275, the midpoint is 320, the maximum is 365. So, what, which which position are you looking at? I'm CIO. working on 142. CIO okay. on page 142. Right. Okay. Right. right. That's what our policy. Is. Our policy is that the CIO can be paid somewhere between 275 and 365. Correct. The proposed peer group that was coming to us would change that proposed from 345 to 505. Correct. And that proposed was the low quartile of an institutional group. I, I, I don't care where, how we get there. I'm just saying that's, that would be our new range, right? That was, that was, the, that was from the last discussion. That was what would the proposal yes, was. Right. Okay, and then so that, we see the light and we see that CalPERS that they went through the similar exercise, and lo and behold, um, their numbers are materially higher. Okay, and can I? Can I why finish? is that, and how is that, and is it appropriate, and should we be adopting the proposed range, or, uh, the CalSTRS proposed range, or should we simply move to CalPERS range and be, you know, be similar? I'm just, I'm just, I'm not trying to talk about the rationale. I'm just trying to be clear on the numbers that we're. That, that are are in front of us. Okay, so, so the, it, would, it would basically can, can be I, going. Can I? Can I? Can I? Excuse me, Adam. Can I please finish? I, I I haven't finished my my understanding, and then people can tell me whether I, my understanding is correct or not correct. Okay, so the proposal that came to us today was that we then move, however we got there, whatever the rationale, whatever the explanation. The numbers that we were being asked to adopt as the new range would be 345 to 505. But the new proposal now in front of us would change it to 408 to 612. Is that correct? Yes or no question? Correct. Thank you. Adam? That's that's my understanding. Yeah. That's <laughs> Just want to give you an opportunity to weigh in. Okay, Grant. Okay, and along those lines, looking at the same position, I don't have it pulled up, but in April, and this is the recommendation that was coming to the board today, the low quartile would have been for the CIO 405, and now we're going for the midpoint, which is 510. Uh, for, uh, no, so let's just get a motion. <laughs> okay. I mean, hang, hang, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Okay. I don't. So, I don't think that is. Okay. I don't think that is. And I'm just asking for clarification. Yes. So, because I have in my notes, but okay. I do not have the April agenda yeah. item pulled up. We're 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 gonna. Cassandra's grabbing that. So, what was the low quartile that we would have been targeting had we gone with the proposed April recommendation for the CIO? It was um, low quartile was 345 to 505. And that's the one that we voted on, right, Grant? 
Yeah. So the low quartile is that, that range from right. three, okay. Okay, thank you. The 345 to 505. Yep, I just have it on my screen here too. Yeah. Okay. Right. All righty. Any further discussion? All righty. So the motion on the floor is to go with CalPERS's comparator group and set the target at the 50th percentile. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. no. So would, you like to, would you like to do it by roll, just to keep it clear, or are we comfortable? Please pardon the interruption. Your conference contains less than three participants at this time. If you would like to continue, press star one now, or the conference will be terminated. I thought God might have been talking to us there for a minute. All righty. Can I just, I need to interject something. What happened? This is like so chaotic. All right, we've... We should finish our, our vote. Okay. Go for it. All righty. Because we can always, somebody can always move to reconsider. So I'm in doubt as chair. So Lamont has asked for if we would like to have a roll call. So I'm going to ask the pleasure of the board. That's not a decision I want to make on my own. Sure. Pleasure of the board. Bye. All righty. Lamont, Lamont, please. <clears throat> Okay, and we're everybody's clear on, let me restate the motion, just to adopt the CalPERS comparator group and set the target at the 50th percentile. That is the pending motion. Mr. Boykin? No. Mr. Gillahan? No. Ms. Hendricks? Yes. Uh, Mr. Rosensteel? No. Mr. Zeiger? Yes. And Mr. Chung? No. Okay. The motion fails. And oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Dillon. I'm sorry, Ms. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Fails. <laughs> fails. So that puts us back to the substitute. And, and, I, and I hope I That's, clarify this now. Well, so the substitute to the substitute fails. Point. That brings us back to the substitute of the proposed group paying the CEO separately. Or not paying the CEO separately, but considering the CEO and other non investment personnel separately. Is there any further discussion on it? Wait, 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 weigh in. I told John I was going to try to do better. <laughs> Go ahead, Rich. Are we setting it at the 25th percentile? Where are we setting it? We were adopting, we had not, it, we're adopting the proposed peer group low at the low quartile. Now, Rich, you had not wanted to separate the CEO, you have the opportunity to offer a substitute. Yeah, I, uh, well, is that the right way to do it? To just, or should we just By go down this one and then do it, try it again? Madam Chair. If I don't want to pull I, I, it out. I think I, I think if you want something to happen, then you make a motion to make it happen, not hope that something gets voted down. So if you want to include okay. the CEO, if you want to include the CEO, you've got to go to the CEO. Include the CEO in the same conditions, but including the CEO. Finish them all off. All right. So that would be so the the. The substitute to the substitute then would be the proposed group, including all the positions brought forward for us at the 25th percentile. And the proposed group, including endowment, like those? Yes, the proposed group. Which is the original Right. Well, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It is the original. Right. It is the original. It is the original. But there was a substitute to that. So we got to kind of go that hierarchy. So. But I tried to go there. Let me do the other way. Is there a second? Second. Okay. It has been moved and seconded. So Lamont, you're with me on that one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes we can get, you know, all in a bind with Roberts, but it really can be our friend at times. Chris? 
Thank you. Um, my comment is about the ranking, not about the issue of uh, anything else. And I'm not sure I will sway your point of view. I just would uh, pl literally plead with you um, not to adopt the lower quartile. I'm very concerned of the message that sends upstairs. Some staff do watch, but you're basically saying, even though you're moving to a different comparator group, you're telling them you want to pay at the lowest quartile, yet you want a above quartile, median to above quartile performance. Um, I know it's already been confusing, but uh, you know we had proposed to Adam and to Cassandra to at least give some leeway so that the range, you can anchor the bottom of the range at the low quartile, but put the top of the range at the median. You can do a wide range. We real, you know, we're not gonna, we're gonna set salaries within some guidance from you. And we recognize all of the issues Richard has raised and Grant has raised about how difficult this environment is. So salary setting is a whole different exercise and will be constrained. But setting a wider range at least tells the staff there is some upside and, and the message of saying we want outsized performance, but we want to pay bottom quartile fees is just really difficult to manage. And I imagine that you know, if, even if our intention is to set it now and move towards that median in a year or two, that it still has a connotation hearing the 25th percentile and it does and I, I want in all respect and i recognize this is difficult the staff has seen this whole process so their confidence that it would get changed in the future is not high thank you chris so rich i should have let you speak to your motion first i apologize before i went to chris do you want to weigh in on it Yeah, um, actually, I think Chris is pretty persuasive on that. Um, I'm just, I'm trying to, I, we're having a problem here <laughs> that I don't know how we can resolve. And it, it, it uh, given the, given who's here and where we want to go with this, it's, it, um, I thought that balancing it off with PERS would work. I'm assuming that some of the same people sitting at this table supported that peer group at PERS, but would not support it here. And I, I find that a little befuddling, frankly, because it, it makes it really hard to know what to do if it was okay over there? Why is it not okay over here? And if so, would you folks kind of weigh in on that? Because it you've left us no place to go. If the if the short answer to that is that you really expect salaries at stirs to be not competitive, I think you have a it's a little bit incumbent on you to speak up about that. I understand one issue that was raised by the treasurer and we tried to accommodate that. Um, but it's getting a little hard now to know kind of where to go. I am concerned about our staff. I do think a change needs to be made. I'm trying to figure out a fair way to get there. And it's just gotten a little difficult because there's, there's kind of no room to maneuver here. And um, I mean, I, 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 you know, I think I want to, I, I, I think we should be direct about what our intents are because that way it makes it a whole lot easier to try to craft a policy that can somehow accommodate that and find that a reasonable place and i'm a little stuck because i'm not sure that all everybody's flipped their cards so that we can see what they are um and i need i need your help i don't know quite where to go it's uh i have i think chris's concern is really a good one and so I actually think I want to withdraw my motion because I don't want I don't think that's a good idea I think it's better for us to find a peer group where we can be at the 50th percentile and assuage that concern before the, as chair once something is out as a motion and it's 
been seconded, and we've had discussion on it. I think it becomes the property of the body. Mm -hmm. It does. Um, so I'm reluctant to, to go the route of withdrawing it. But if any, I mean, I guess there could be, the, well, you're going to have to help me out with Roberts now, because can you amend a substitute to a substitute? So if there was an amendment to change the 25th percentile to the 50th or to broaden that range, um, it, but could somebody you, offer an amendment to that? But you've already seconded the motion. So Right. So and so the motion itself is... Is is out there for the original proposal? Belongs to the house. No. Okay. No, because there was a substitute to the original motion, and then now we have a substitute to that substitute. Right. So we're three layers out right. from the original. Can an amendment be made to the substitute to the substitute? Yes, you can continue to amend. To amend. To All amend. right. But so Rich, I just I, meant I think the substance. I, the substance of the motion is. The original comparator group. No, I, no, I, I understand okay. that. I understand that. Right. So, are you suggesting that I propose an amendment to my own motion? No, I think that actually has to come from somebody else, and you would have to accept it as friendly or not, and then we'd have to vote on the amendment if it wasn't. But before we go there, Could Cassandra, we go to a I, process that's a relatively common one, which is if the seconder agrees to withdraw, to withdraw the it. second, then the maker of the motion can withdraw the motion. Provided nobody else wants to object to that. Uh, we can go there if you want. So I, let me try that. You seconded his motion. Are you going to let him withdraw it? Are there any other objections? So now, All right. now, could I propose a substitute motion that would use the comparative group at, 50, at the 50th, at the median point? The proposed group, the originally proposed group, everybody in the package at the 50th percentile. Right. Is there a second to that motion? I would second that. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Rich, I know we've talked. Do you want to talk more to your motion? Yeah. All right. Cassandra, I'd like you to, to weigh in. Have we determined what that, that span might be? The salary, the salary ranges, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't know. Yeah, the ranges for that. If we were to yeah. <coughs> at the 25th and then expand the range so it included the 50th. Well, we have that on attachment two is the median. Right. That's attachment right. two. That's attachment two. All right. So is there any further discussion? John's face has changed. Terry, do you want to weigh in? Uh, I, I would like to have clarification as to whether or not your amendment or substitute motion speaks to the 50th percentile or basically the, the, the first quartile or the fourth quartile to the median, up to the median. It's the median. It's based on the median. Is that what the numbers we have are based on the median? Okay. It's the median. Based on the median of the comparative group. The target is the median, and the range goes. But, but the range is the range is adjusted based on the median, up and down from that, as I understand it, right? So, and here, here are the examples on on, on the attachment to on page one forty-seven of the, the set of the, the, the ranges overlap from the low. So there is an overlap because we're not setting right. the salary right at the median. We're going in any range. We set it below that point and then above that point to have a range. All right. Is there any further discussion? Terry, did you have any follow-up on that? No, that's fine. All righty. Lamont, are you clear on the motion? Yes. I'm clear. All right. Anyone else? All righty. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay? Nay. I'm thinking we've got the same split. <laughs> Sharon. Is it, is it, I guess I would, I appreciated Richard's comments about the people that are on this board that are on the other board or just kind of hearing more of what, because it's just, I mean, it's clear, I get it, so I'm willing to move on, but I guess, you know, it'd be helpful to hear more of like from finance or from the treasurer, or, you know, just, and maybe they voted no and it passed anyway at CalPERS, but I guess if they're comfortable, I'd like to kind of hear a little bit more about 
you know, what your thoughts are, or is it just no raises at all, or I don't know. Is that okay for me to ask? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so the mom, or you heard the same thing I heard my, on the Yeah, my, my, I had to count uh, three yeses to four no's. Okay, I just wanted to make sure before we moved on. All right, Sharon, um, so, so. you're good? Yep. Richard? Uh, just in response to the question, I think we've articulated our concerns, and we don't sit on the, the first board. Okay, so that's, that's great. Thank you for clarifying. That's fine. I'm good. I'm moving on. Terry? Yes, um, to respond to the question, basically, um, I, th I think there are a couple of parts here, and the different motions have somewhat confused the issue. And and uh, I think that, that the CEO separating that discussion, as was suggested by the treasurer's office, is I think a, a separate issue because uh, uh, basically the controller's office agrees with the reasons expressed by the treasurer's office on that issue. But speaking to the median versus the other quartile, um, I, I think that you have certain offices here that didn't agree with what happened at CalPERS to begin with. Right. Um, so, so I think you have to recognize that during you know a difficult time that we've been experiencing and we still continue to experience within state government local government, revenues, and so on. Um, it's just not the time, necessarily, to have significant increases in compensation, as much as we value our investment staff and so on, uh, and our executive staff. So you wanted to hear a response as to where uh, you know, some of the board members sit. That's, I think, the basic argument. Awesome. Thanks, Terry. That's really helpful. That's cool. So our decision point from what I'm looking at is we, we're not willing to go with the, the CalPERS proposed. We're not willing to go with the proposed peer group. Um, but we still have the issue of whether we change from what our policy is to what the salary ranges are for our current comparator group. So, so is there any is there any care to have a conversation about that more? Because now we are below and in some cases far below what our current comparator group is. Rich So here's my here's my dilemma, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. We are short-handed, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure what the addition of the others would do to the conversation. Um, and so I'm sort of to be I'm just thinking out loud. I'm torn between whether I pick a smaller number to make some progress because that's what the others would end up doing or whether we stop and retreat and decide that we are hopelessly deadlocked with the current composition uh, until we can get enough people here to make a definitive decision. I don't know if there's a, I don't know that there's a point that I can win some converts to doing something which I think would be a good idea. I think we've dragged this along a long time. If you talk about things that are demoralizing to staff, dragging this out and not making any kind of decisions at all does not help. And um, the only option that's sort of left on the table is to, which we don't have the numbers in front of us, is to, is to I don't think, is to pick the, when we, we talk about current. We do have the figures for the current peer group. And is it pegged at which? At the 50th percentile? Where are they? Go ahead. It's there here on. Right on each um, of the pages for each position, we have what the policy 
um, currently has within it, and then what the um, based on the peer group that's articulated in the policy, and that that peer group, um, based on the new data, would result in this uh, salary range that says current peer under peer group. But that doesn't ha happen automatically according to our policy. Right, you would have to adopt those salary ranges. Thank you. So, Rich, do you see where they are? I, I don't. On page 141. Can, can I ask a question about that? Well, I still have Rich okay. on the floor. Yes. And I'll, I have you next. I have you next. Go ahead. So, but were you? No, I'm, I'll get back there. Okay. I'm asking some questions. Paul? Huh? Help. Well, I'm just trying, again, I'm trying to understand these numbers. So if you look at, at INV 142 or TRB 142 and Chief Investment Officer, so our current policy is a range from 275 to 365. And the next column over, next two columns over are peer group. And is that our current peer group or the proposed change in the peer group that was brought to us, which we decided not to approve? Um, the current, where it says current, that's our current peer group. That's our current the, peer group. Right. The reason why it's changed is because we haven't made a change in six years. We've, we've had the same peer group for six years. I mean, we've had the same peer group for, you know, longer than six years. But we have not. Um, so the salary ranges, so, let me see if I can uh, solidify that. So when McLaughlin came back to us with the updated information on the salary ranges of our peer group, that's how much they've changed since we said it last time. Right. So our policy was based on that pair group then. And this is what those salary ranges look like now. And right. Yeah, and I, let me, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just want to clarify, clarify I just want to clear one, clarify one thing. The last time we made a change was six years ago. We looked at it four years ago, and, and, um, and the only resulting change um, that came out of that was a change in the head of investment operations. It didn't result in a change to any of the other salaries, so, that, so they stayed the same. We haven't looked at it for four years, but in four years' time, the salary ranges within the peer group that we currently have have adjusted to um, reflective of, of these um, columns that say current. So again, let, let me just ask my question, because I, I appreciate you're trying to help me. But I'm somehow missing it, so let me ask the question that is confusing me. Okay. So that second column, peer group, current, that's our current peer group. Correct. And the next column, peer group proposed, that's a different peer group? Correct. That's a proposed new peer group? Correct. Okay. So, because the heading of peer group made it seem to me like we, we were keeping to this same, that both columns were the same peer group. Got it. And, and I must have been stupid in understanding it that way, but thank you for clarifying <laughs> right. it. Well. So if we were to keep to the current peer group we have now and update based on their salaries to the minimum and, and maximum of the current peer group that we've lived with for six years and we've only, and we haven't adjusted, made adjustments for, you said four years? Um, we've had it for, I think, 10 years. We haven't made an adjustment in six years, too. We haven't made an adjustment in six years. So our policy of 270, again, for CIO, for 275, 320, 365, those are numbers that are six years out of date? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that if we adjusted just for the, cha for the, for the six-year change in the salaries of that same unchanged peer group, we would go to 310, 380, and 450. Correct. But what had come to us as a proposal was to change the peer group and as well as update to make it current numbers for this up this changed peer group. And that would have gotten us to 345, 425, and 505. Correct. Thank you. Yes. Exactly. Thank you. All right. Tina? Yes, Adam. Hi. Can, um, may I just off, offer just a comment? Yes. When we started this, we wanted to take an honest look at the peer group. And the peer group, the honest look was the institutional peer group. Again, it's the, it's the, it's the, ones, that are sh the ones you see the data on each of these sheets. 
It's on the third column over, the leading institutional managers. It was an honest look at that peer group. And the view was, we get, and we had a whole conceptual discussion about what are the right peers and the, the problems associated with the current peer group. And I think that everyone agreed that the leading institutional uh, firms made sense. It wasn't until that we looked at the numbers that you said, oh, we just can't get to, we just can't get there. And that's where we backed off and the recommendation came in at the low quartile. So it was a concession to the fact that the numbers were too high, and if the numbers are too high because you haven't done this analysis and you haven't, you know, adjusted policy structure in, in you know, Cassandra mentioned five, five or six years, and then you also look at CalPERS numbers. I just, I'm just, I maybe I'm being out of turn here. Um, I, I'm not clear why you, why you just can't adopt CalPERS group and maybe put some of the non-investment positions aside and address them later. It just to me, it's 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 consistent. The the Calpers numbers are consistent with the institutional group that we came up with originally. They're your best and most the best comparable out there relative to institution. Board members agreed. Several of the Calsters board members already agreed that it was an appropriate group. Um, Chris mentioned that they're a top recruiting source. It just to me, it seems that you've gone through these issues already. Um, and it seems that it's a very simple, defensible position to take. Again, the issues of the non-investment executives are, are clear, and maybe just you know address them at a different time. Well, Adam, the reason why we can't go there is nobody's made that motion yet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, what, no, I, well, I, we didn't we didn't I'm, pass I'm board, that so motion. I, right. I'm not on the board, so I can't make the motion. <laughs> I know, I know. I did make that. But yes. my suggestion is to adopt CalPERS peer group and then, you know, respecting what Grant was saying is potentially address those other positions, you know, have more study and more thought about the rationale associated with the peer group for those other positions. But, like, get this done. Well, I don't know if we're done yet, quite yet or not. <laughs> that horse might still be twitching. Um, I, I, have, I have people in line, so... Um, We'll go there. Grant? Well, I will make that motion, which I believe was the original motion that I made. So adopt the comparator group that was proposed. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm just thinking, did I do a parliamentary snafu where we never came back to the original substitute, which was his? I withdrew it when a there substitute you withdrew it. Okay. Withdrew so we didn't it do I that. Didn't think it was okay. As long as we're good. All right. So, Grant, we're back at you. Adopt the CalPERS group. Um, non-investment non staff. Non staff will take up later. All right. Is there a second for that? Second. All right. Do you want to speak any more to your motion? I mean, I spoke to it the first time I made it. Okay. Terry, did you want to weigh in on it? No. Sharon? Okay, so if <laughs> just, if we adopt, if we choose to vote for this motion, how is how how are we changing the way that we're looking at pay then for these for the CEOs? Yeah, I just want to understand the numbers. So if we adopt this, Cassandra. I, I would just need direction on how to um, move forward with the non-investment staff positions. What peer group would we benchmark? But like for senior? the, I guess I'm just saying for the investment staff. For the investment if staff. If we adopt the, what Grant is proposing, mm -hmm. what are the number implications in they, terms that's, of? Those are on attachment one. Okay. Yeah. So. so if you go to page two, if you look for, uh, for Chris's position. Yeah. You see in Chris's position, where the current policy has has a range midpoint, the first column there of 320. 320. Yep. The proposed would have an, a range maximum of 365. The minimum of that range would be the 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 fourth fifth column over 408, and the max midpoint of 510, and maximum of 612. We had in the last discussion the notion of ensuring that, the, that positions are brought to at least to the minimum of their range within a year or two. So that means that Chris's salary would be brought 
you know, to at least the 408 level soon. Is that helpful? Yep. Thanks, Adam. Rich. So could I get could I get you, Grant, to restate the motion? Grant. So I move that we adopt the committee recommendation as is, which is the comparator group. Or no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Been a long afternoon. So I, I move that we adopt the CalPERS comparator group and then for investment staff only and then work with consultant and staff to try and come up with the methodology to set non-investment staff base salaries. And that's at the 50th percentile? Yes. So we haven't had that motion yet. No. Okay, because it was a proposed pair the proposed pay comparator group. Yeah, so it's, it's I was just hoping I was tracking CEO. well. Okay. Yes. No, it's not just the CEO. So it's all non-investment staff, which uh, includes our general counsel, uh, actuary. system actuary, and CEO. Hardy? Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I have... I've, Personally, I have to express angst at that. Um, I don't know if the system actuary and the general counsel are at the top of their ranges, but I do know that our CEO is at the top of theirs. And I would hope that if this passes that we move expeditiously and try to solve that conundrum of who we will compare their salaries to because their salaries in this are compared to that, to the same like positions in that comparator group. So we're, we'd have to look at a totally different comparator group. And, and that gives me pause. Cassandra? Yeah, my, my question would be, uh, would we use the current comparator group for, for uh, adjusting the salaries until that's done? Say so what do you mean? Well, right now they're benchmarked against the, the comparator group, the current comparator group, and which haven't been hasn't been changed in six years. Could would we be using that current comparator group to make the salary adjustments for this year, until or until we take that up at a later time? Which means moving theirs into what the underneath the peer group would be current then. Correct. All right. That would that would it's not my place, but that would seem like a reasonable position to take. Um, no, it's not part of it's not part of his motion. Can I amend that? Um, sure, as long as there's not an objection from the board. Okay. So I'd amend the motion so that we, for the non-investment positions, we adjust the salaries according to the current comparator group. At the mid-range. At the mid-range. Mid I just want to make sure that we clarify everything. Okay. Thank you. So both will be at the mid-range. <clears throat> for non-investment staff will be the current comparator group. For the investment staff, it will be the CalPERS comparator group. That's what I just want to make sure. I mean, that's where we are, correct? Lamont, we, we, we there? That's correct, yes. All righty. Okay. Hey, hang on. Rich? I'll pass. For the moment. Paul? Huh? So the current comparator group not updated for the current pay in that comparator group or the current comparator group updated for the current pay in that comparator group? The updated current comparator group. Thank you. Well, did you have anything else? No, just okay. wanted to just want to make sure I know Rich? what we're voting on. Mm -hmm. So that's good. That was actually a clear a good clarifying I I'm trying to get you there. There uh, you go. Okay. Um, I probably have expressed my feeling that I'm not terribly happy with this, but I do think it's time to move this ball forward. I mean, I think we, I, frankly, I think it's really bad to have, to have dawdled over this for so long. It's bad for the staff. It's, it's bad for the morale. Um, I would point out that, I actually, I'm, I can't decide whether I was happier with some conclusion around the non-investment staff or not, because the truth is we've made 
I'm, I'm worried that we've made a de facto decision about where we're, how we're going to set their salaries by, by, updating, by updating the current comparator group for them. I'm not sure if the original intent was to go back in and do a review of those and find the right way to do it. And, and those are two different things. By including them in, we've made a decision about them. And, and you know, but I, you know, maybe that's as good as we're going to get. I don't know that we're going to get a better decision about that than, because than, than, we're having a hard time with this. And so um, I'm, a little, I'm a little unnerved by it, but I think the short answer is I, I think we're better off making a decision than not making a decision because I think it's going to leave them hanging forever, even if it's not the decision I'd like. So the short answer is I'm okay. Let's push ahead. Grant? I see what you're saying. I thought when I amended that that I was, that was sort of an interim step. A that, transitional until we decide yeah, until we what we want to do? Well, Cassandra, what I hear then from Grant's motion is that when the Compensation Committee meets, and we are going to meet in August, that, he, that we would start to revisit the non-investment staff and, 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 and take a look, a harder look at their comparator group. But in the meantime, at least we have movement that the board desires if we vote that way in the meantime. Right. That's, that's okay. my understanding as well. Okay. Grant, that clear? That's, you're good with that? Okay. There are no other speakers. Uh, we'll put it out to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. No. And I will vote aye. That one, I think, passed. I have that five to two. Is that correct, Mr. Rosenstiel? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, it's yeah. And so, and if and if any of the board wants to have a roll call vote, they can ask for that now. All right. Then we'll say that the motion is passed. Adam, you yep. still there? What well, time? Yeah. What time is it in London right now? Actually, I got back from London this afternoon for this call, so I, it's not too late in New York. So we didn't have London calling. I was calling. Well, I was I was in London this morning. <laughs> no, you were not, not not our morning. All right, Adam. Thank you very much for calling in. We really appreciate it. We appreciate you hanging in there with us throughout the process. Um, I'm thank, sure thank we will be getting in touch with you again soon. And Cassandra has something else. I just wanted to, uh, since it was part of the original motion um, for clarification on the transition rules that we bring uh, staff that are below the minimum within the min minimum of a two to three year period two based on period. Poli that current is, policy. That is part of our current policy. It's right? a 10% or maybe. All right. If you're, if you're below the minimum to bring them if within you're below the, minimum, the minimum. To bring you up to the minimum, within, we do that within a two, two to three, to three year period. Year but we right. did chunks of 10%, right? We, sh yes. we should be able to, I, based on my uh, calculations, we should be able to get everybody up within the three-year period that okay. are below it, yeah. All righty. Super. Paula? I don't know. I've been coming to these meetings for about five years. And the first time I heard the salary discussed way back then, I went, ah, oh, because how could they do that? I was at the site of my daughter's proposed wedding, and I had a call from one of my team members, and how can they do that? It's all over the papers. I've been sitting at these meetings for five years, and I cannot see how you can't do that. You have a fabulous staff, and you must honor them. You must recognize what they are doing for you and for us, and I'm speaking only as Paula Weiss, retired teacher. And I have watched this staff from um, Jack badging me out when I've been locked in the building, taking me to my car when I didn't know where to park, and to Chris when I started. And I heard you guys talking about leveraging. And I was standing and talking to Pat, and I said, what is le leveraging? Chris stopped dead in front of me and taught me. I've learned a lot from you guys, but I've learned to respect you, and I also respect the family that exists in Cal Sturs. And from Versa Osta or whatever, 
I also want to say that, I mean, we are the little sister. When I go to the Capitol, I am sick of being the little sister who's neglected. Don't neglect your staff. All righty, we've had a long discussion. It is three o'clock. Let's take a five minute break and we'll come back. We're done with this item. All righty. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna.